How's it going? It's Pat Mahone, head grower with Pure Air Natives out of the St. Louis, Missouri region. We grow a lot of different natives, supply ecotype seed for habitat restoration and other public lands. We also outreach to private people by supplying them with very hardy, good growing natives. But one thing we've been focusing a lot on lately has been Asclepias cultivation, propagation, and ultimately we would like to start with uh, seed production for these species. A lot of these uh, milkweeds that you're looking at from Asclepias, they are not native to Missouri. A lot of these are native from Florida to California and from Canada down to Mexico. But we grow all of them because we have the facility and the environment and the staff that can understand how to cultivate these and propagate these correctly. We've gotten a lot of good results from this genus and we are topping approximately 30 different Asclepia species growing in the greenhouse. In front of us is approximately 20 different species and I'll go ahead and do a quick run through through all of them. I do not claim to be an expert on them, however we have gotten great results from them and I can share a few little notes and tips about each one. I should also mention too that nothing here is older than eight months old from seed. So the first one we have is Asclepius humistrata. Uh, this is a uh, native to southern regions of the United States, Florida, I think Georgia, Alabama area. Just a gorgeous species. And it's misting all over me. Uh, it has slightly glaucous leaves. They, uh, in high light conditions, the stem and the leaves are pretty purple. Whenever the leaves mature out, uh, they turn a nice green color and they have a beautiful pinkish purple uh, venation on them. This one began flowering yesterday and it has approximately four main stems that are going to start blooming. Uh, and there's quite a few several little stems that may or may not develop for this season. Now this plant is approximately eight months old from seed, not from germination, and it has performed extremely well. Very pleased with it. The next one we're going to look at here, this is a Missouri native. It's found around the Midwest. This is Asclepius solivantii. Asclepius solivantii is referred to us as the prairie milkweed. Uh, it, it looks very similar to common milkweed and showy milkweed. Uh, the flowers are quite similar. But what's very unusual is these are ready to divide by stem, so they're quick to colonize, and they're very vigorous, even in containers. So Sclepia solivantii uh, will be phasing out, hopefully, the propagation and cultivation of common milkweed and showy milkweed as it is very vigorous in container. Uh, the next two is Asclepius californica and Asclepius vestida. They're very similar looking. Uh, this example here has a little bit more ruffled leaves than most. It may be because I've been putting it out into full sun and testing a little bit of the extremes it can tolerate, especially with uh, withholding of water. Seems to be doing quite well. Uh, for these two species, Asclepius vestida is very quick to grow. It looks very nice. However, it is very fast to um, pretty much just peter out after a certain size. In the container at least. Asclepius californica, it immediately wants to put out a very strong taproot. I've talked to some people about it, it can make a taproot 10-15 feet or more in depth 
in the soil. In a container, it seems to do very well as long as you create a very good substrate for both of these species, or for any of the California or desert species. I covered a video on the potting mix that I devised for the California native species of milkweeds. What happens is the taproot tends to go out to the bottom and abort, and then keeps on regrowing and keeps on fixing itself. And eventually, it swells like what you're seeing here, and that's it. It's not going to keep on going. We will see how this affects uh, long-term growth and how it will affect sexual maturity in the next season when it blooms. It seems like it's Sclopius vestita. No matter what we do, we cannot get it to bloom despite its vigor and how fast it, it grows. So it might bloom the second season whenever this goes dormant. The next species we have, this is uh, pretty rare in Missouri, however it is found in, in quite a few other states and, and may be more abundant in those states. This is uh, poke milkweed, a Sclepius exultata. This is a seedling that's approximately four months old. It's very tall, very attractive ruffled leaves with the nice pink margins. Uh, we grow these pretty hard, so they are getting full sun, and they do get misted approximately every 20 minutes. They are a woodland species, where they'll grow on the edges of the woodland and maybe possibly more mesic areas. But I've yet to see it in the wild. Next one we're going to cover, it's a very unusual species. Oops. It's uh, Asclepius cryptoceros. Variety Davidzii. It's the jewel milkweed. And it seems to be a very small milkweed species. It stays rather compact, very large flowers that almost dwarf the entire plant. Uh, this seedling here is approximately one and a half months old, and it's doing quite well. It is starting to actually branch on the inner node right there. So we have, we'll be very, very pleased with what it decides to do. The one behind it is Asclepius subulata, the rush milkweed. This is found in the desert, Arizona. Uh, typically it grows its leaves for a little bit. They're very minuscule leaves and then it sheds the leaves and they look like uh, bare reeds. They do very well in the quart container. They do even better in larger size of pots. Uh, behind it is Asclepius onethroides, uh, also called the Zizotes, native to, I guess, Texas, that kind of area. Uh, they do all right. They do, they do well in the container. It is its first season. They do get very scraggly. Uh, for the most part, their growth is prostrate, even in situ. And I imagine that if you were to plant this in amongst grass, it would do fantastic. Another woolly leaf species. This is the Indian milkweed, Asclepius iriocarpa. These have been, for the most part, a, a struggle. And I think it has to do with seed vigor. So we had excellent germination on Asclepius aerocarpa, however we had very poor vigor. And so many of the plants are dwarfed, very small, growing into themselves. They'll ultimately probably be cold if they do not fix themselves by the next season. Uh, we have two very similar species here. This is uh, Asclepius subversitisolata. It is very quick. This is a seedling that was just transplanted approximately two weeks ago. So it was about an inch and a half tall. It has a wider leaf than the similar uh, Asclepius verticillata. And it is readily growing side growths along that main stem. And as you can see here, if you plant them a little bit deeper, they will immediately start to grow uh, shoots from the actual root zone. 
So there's approximately one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are eight growths in this little spot right here. And these are seedlings. They're not very old. A very vigorous species. I imagine it'll do well, especially in the quart container. Behind it is uh, a species that everybody treasures. Uh, it's absolutely beautiful. Asclepius purpurassens, the purple milkweed. Uh, you can usually tell if it's purpurassens out in the wild because they'll have a very slender stem, and typically you will see a little bit of pink venation in this species. They do grow in shade, they do grow in full sun, they grow where it's wet, they grow where it's dry. The only thing in common that all the specimens in situ have is they're very sporadic. Uh, in this foreground here, this is Asclepius, oh gosh, I'm blanking on the name, Asperula. Uh, Asperula is more native to Kansas and kind of replaces, it seems, some of the areas where you'd find Viridis. This is a seedling that's approximately six months old. It has already gone through its first uh, season. So the, the initial stem that came as a seedling, I just cut it off prior to making this video. And this is the new season's growth. So it'd be the equivalent of a two-year-old plant or the second season. Uh, behind it is the broadleaf Asclepius. This is a very, very beautiful species, and I'm wondering how it will perform in quartz. The plants look like giant Brussels sprout plants in maturity, but they have a very, very beautiful uh, Pharaonose leaf, and sometimes in the new leaves on some of the plants, whenever they get very high light, it will turn a gorgeous purple color. Behind it is Asclepius viridis, a very common milkweed to the western portion of the state of Missouri. It has beautiful green leaves. Uh, as you can tell, this has a wider, broad leaf whereas Asperula has thinner, lanceolate-like leaves. They have very similar flowers, and I've yet to see them bloom next to each other, so it'd be very interesting to see how close the flowers really are. In the background here, we have the pine needle milkweed. Uh, in the nature, it, it gets a lot denser uh, inner nodes, and it may still in, in a container and it drops a lower portion of the leaves, making it look like a seedling pine tree or a dwarf pine tree species. It's very beautiful. Here we have uh, two different examples of Asclepius tuberosa. They represent two different ecotypes. This is a, uh, I, I believe they're both Asclepius tuberosa subspecies interior. Uh, this is an example that has like a tropical milkweed looking flower type. The plant on this type uh, tends to go prostrate for the most part, so it's leaning over and it's just doing what it does, and then it will start inner node growth and bush out. Uh, the other example we have was collected more further south. It may actually not be subspecies interior. It kind of represents the species examples that we would see in Florida and it tolerates a lot more water. It has a uh, ruffled leaf, a lot wider, uh, and it seems to bloom just a little bit after the normal subspecies interior. In the background here, it's hard to see. This is uh, Sclepius cordifolia, heart-shaped milkweed. And it gets very, very long. It's like a vine. So I'll just zoom out here. Uh, as a seedling, it's very stringy. The tender leaves are a delicacy for both thrips and for aphids. So there's a lot of uh, leaf mutilation in the seedling because we do not want to put on harsh pesticides that may negatively affect the milkweeds at a later time for the pollinators. Uh, our seedlings now, they're approximately four and a half months old, I believe, from seed. 
and they are in bud. Another example of the uh, thin-leafed milkweeds, this is uh, Spopius verticillata. This was actually a cutting that we did, a single cutting that's approximately five or six months old now. It is an absolute bush. Uh, it has a very thinner leaf, and in nature, these are typically solitary stems if they are in shadier areas. And the final species is the swamp milkweed, Sclepias incarnata. And it loves water, does very well in a very wide range of habitat. And that's all the milkweeds.